Hello. Hopefully you've had a chance to watch the first two videos in this series. We've covered the basics of the system and also running your very first switching case. In this video, we're going to look at comparing new business on the system via accumulation quote. Uh, so straight off the bat into our new accumulation quote. OK, so I mentioned in the first video that if you've already got the client on the system, you can pick them from the list. So as we've already done our switching case, let's do that and pick our new client. OK, and you can see it's filled in all the information and the exclamation mark's gone. So we'll work our way down the left. Now, one of the really powerful features of O&M Profiler is the ability to do side by side quotes. So you can model different scenarios in the same view. You could perhaps look at different vehicles to invest in, different amounts to invest, see what impact that would have over time, all sorts of different options. Uh, what we're going to do today is a cash ISA versus a stocks and shares ISA. But if I show you in here, you'll see all the different types of quotes that you can do. So you can do any combination of these. Uh, like I say, we're going to do cash ISA for option one. Fill in these details. So we've got specific term. We could do to specific age, but obviously for an ISA, it's perhaps more relevant the term. Uh, just fill in some basic details. So the cash ISA, we don't have all the cash ISAs programmed in the system, but they're very simple beasts. So we just need to tell it some of the charging information. So let's say we've got 50,000 sitting in ISAs already, and we're lucky enough to get 1% interest. And we're not going to take any money out. So that's option one set up. If we go to option two, we could copy option one if we were going to do a variation of that. We're going to do something a bit different though. We're going to do the stocks and shares alongside it. So you can see we've got the same options. 50,000 to go in, no extra money, no withdrawals, and we need a growth rate for the fund investments. So we'll leave that on the mid rate at 5%. Again, we could add in a third option, but I'm going to keep it simple for the purposes of this and just do the two. But hopefully you can see the power there of what, what options you've got available to you. So exclamation marks are gone. Next section, select investment. OK, same options as you had under the switch. I'm going to go with exactly the same approach and do sector defaults. You'll see this time around it's IA sectors rather than ABI sectors. Um, and I've got some defaults set. So for the purposes of this, let's do a let's do a conservative investment. And I'm going to find the cheapest version for each of those and head to results. OK, and straight away you can see you've got the side by side comparison, you've got the cash ISA which in real terms is losing money. And you've got the stocks and shares ISA, which even with advisor charging included, is making money in real terms. And you can see the two charts side by side there. And if we do our quick compare again, we get the full list of the extra ones available. Um, you might have clients who perhaps take a bit of convincing to get out of a cash ISA. Uh, we've created a dashboard which talks about some of the considerations of that. And we're showing the advantages and disadvantages. We're also showing the real rate of return. Let's zoom that chart. You can do this with any of the charts in the system. You can zoom into them. You can export them. You can even view the data behind them. All of these additional informations are available as reports. So you can print cash ISA considerations. Uh, you can always print the current view as well, the current additional information. That will be there as that. It doesn't matter which one you got viewed. And by the same token, you don't need to be viewing it on screen in order to print it. We've got a comparison report, investment options report, that will compare the two. Uh, let's run that and we'll have a very quick chat about what's included in that. Okay, so we've got our cover page again. Uh, we've got introduction talking about what we're, what we're comparing and why. And then we go into detail on each of the two options or three options, depending on how many you've got. So we're talking about cash ISA. We've got the advantages and disadvantages. We've got our stocks and shares. We've got the same for that. And then we've got the comparison page between the two. And finally, any assumptions that we've made. OK. Let's just turn quick compare off. And change that dashboard back to our comparison. One thing you'll notice, because we're doing side-by-side -side comparisons, we've got a little less screen space here to show the results list. Obviously, that's even less when you've got three. Uh, so it's worth noting the little zoom icon here. If I click on that, and then you get the full results list, you can also see some extra information by flicking through the various tabs. And of course, you can export that or print that if you want to as well. You can always print it without zooming. If I come into here, and pick results option two or results option one, then you can print those off as well. Okay, so I'm gonna go back to the home screen and we're gonna have a look at a decumulation quote. 
Same premise, we've got our button, let's dive in and do it. Let's create a client this time. Okay. And what we're doing in this quote is we're looking to work out where to put his pension in retirement. So we're looking whether it's an annuity, a drawdown or whatever else. So obviously we're expecting him to have some savings, have an investment. So we need to add in the current plan. And we'll pick on the Abbey again. Nothing against them, just pure alphabetical order. And it's a personal pension we've got. So it's very much like the switching process. You're going to tell us what the current value is. Enter that in. And then some extra fields. None of these need to be filled in. I'm not even going to this time. I'm just going to leave it at that and head to quote type. Now you can see, again, very familiar between the different areas of the system. We've got three side-by-side -side comparisons available to us again. And we've got all sorts of different types that we can compare. So the several scenarios you might look at here, you might be doing perhaps three annuity quotes first to see which annuity style best suits, perhaps then three flexi access drawdown or different types of drawdown to see which one you're going to go with. What I'm going to do for the purposes of this one is I'm going to do an annuity quote using Azure Web. So the first time you come to use this, it'll prompt you to enter your Azure Web details. If you haven't got those, that's not a problem. You can head over to their site and it's free to register. You'll get a free login and then it'll uh, link the two systems up. Just fill in the details. And we need to tell it some extra info because it's an annuity, so it's going to want to know the date of birth and postcode and things like that. So I'm just going to use the office postcode. And they've got no health issues and not a smoker. And then head to results. Okay, so you can see for this example, about four and a half thousand a year is what they've got back. What I'm going to do is I'm going to look and see what happens if I take the same amount in the flex access drawdown. So I'm going to head back to quote type and add in a second option. And we'll use the same info, but this time round we're going to tell it explicitly what we want, 4,500. Okay. Now, if you want to take any extra withdrawals on top of the tax-free cash, then you can enter that there. Obviously, we're not going to here because we're doing a like-for-like -like comparison. Because we did the annuity first, we didn't have to pick an investment. Uh, this time round, obviously, we're going into drawdown. We do need to tell it where we're going to invest. So we've got a new section to fill in. And you can see we've told you that because we've got the exclamation mark there. So let's head along to new investment. I'm going to use the fund picker this time just to keep it a bit different. So scenario here is I know exactly which fund I'm going to use. And I'm going to pick it from a list. And I'm going to use Fidelity Money Builder. Didn't know the ISIN. If I did, I could have typed the ISIN in. But what the system's gone away and done is it's gone and found all those. And then I can pick the one I want to use from the list. And add selected fund. Now you can repeat that process. You can invest in multiple funds. Just keep searching, type and adding them in. I'm just going to do the one for this. And a little shortcut, if you just pick in one fund, double click and it'll put 100% in. Now the using rules just as important in fund picking. Basically, we're going to say, find me the cheapest share class available for each product. Uh, but there's all sorts of different rules there. You can say explicitly only use that fund, whichever one you pick. Uh, I'm going with the cheapest available fund, and I'm going to head to results. Okay, so now I've got my side-by-side -side comparison, taking the same amount of income. The difference being I've got money left in the pot in my drawdown plan. And what I can now do is I can go back and add a third quote type, looking at maybe I can increase the level of income and still have money left in the pot. And you can see, hopefully, just by building up a picture, by stepping through it, how easy and repeatable the whole process is and how quick it is to change different options and illustrate what could happen in their retirement. So for option three, what we're going to do this time is we're going to copy an option just so you can see how that works. So we're going to copy option two, pulls through all of the same assumptions, but I'm going to double that income, see what that does. And head back to results. There we 
we go. I do run out of money this time. So obviously the middle ground is somewhere in between the two, but we can easily go back and change that and repeat. Last thing to touch on is the reports. As ever, you've got a comparison report. This time around, it's the retirement options report. So if you pick that, I'm not going to step through it in this video, keep the video to a reasonable length, but it's the same sort of style to the early one with the advantages and disadvantages and the side-by-side -side comparisons. Okay, I hope you found that useful. In the next video, we're going to look at retirement modeling. Thanks for watching.